praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. O Most High, the word of God came to us this morning telling us, let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. We are praising our God. That's enough. Hallelujah. To give thanks and praise to the Lord for Amen. Praise the Lord, the Lord. Today I'm going to be speaking on the subject. What we put in is what we will get out. What we put in is what we will get out. When I was in school, I heard some of the very influential students say, school is very boring. They're tired of the books and the studying, and it's a waste of time. Some of them were not dull or lacking where the ability to learn is concerned. But they were lacking in application. They were lacking in discipline. And they focused on everything else beside learning what they've been taught in the classroom. Most of them who were saying these things never used to take their education very seriously. And that was their, their biggest downfall. They were turned up to school just because their parents sent them. But they were not interested in what was taught in the classrooms. They were mostly interested in attracting the opposite sex. Making jokes, smoking and drinking, liming and partying, and things that, everything else beside their schoolwork. These type of students put in very little into their education. And so because of this, despite their great potential and their abilities to learn and to really excel, because of their lack of application, when the time came for them to sit the GCSEs or the CXC exams, some of them struggled to leave school even with two other months. However, those students who put in the hard work and apply themselves and focused on getting a good education, most of them got six or levels or more and they were able to pursue higher education or to start a decent paying job. Therefore, I know from my, know my own experience at school that what you put in into your education is exactly what you're going to get out of it. Some didn't work hard, but they prayed. And they got powerful prayers done on their behalf. Some even fasted. But they still failed because they did not put in enough effort into their studying. And so they did not get a lot out of it. What God is saying to us today is that in order for us to get something out of whatever we are pursuing in this world, we need to put in something. You see, God is a God of order and he wants us to abide by certain principles. Say for instance in sports, all the very successful athletes that we see from time to time. The boxers, I heard Mr. Joshua speaking the other day. And he was telling the people, I watched a documentary with him. Mr. Joshua said, the World Heavyweight Champion today said, I work hard in the gym. I go through a lot of training and suffering day in, day out, especially when he's building up to a fight. And he said to the people who were interviewing him, I work too hard in the gym to go in the ring and to be dominated. So because he's not putting in something when he goes into the ring, he's, he's vicious. If you take anybody, one or two blows, you can't really stand up to Mr. Joshua so easy because he needs to be powerful. 
up. Yeah. And he was saying, it's not because I could box me that I'm taking it easy. He's training night and day in the gym and going flat out in order to maintain his shape and to be able to, to, to carry out a full match of 12 rounds if it's, if it's required. Because he's not taking any chances. He takes his sport seriously. What I'm trying to say, whether it's football, whether it's cricket, basketball, tennis, or any type of sport, for these athletes and these professional sports stars to really be at the top of their game, they cannot go out to compete callously. They train hard. They exercise well. They practice constantly. They even eat well. They drink well. And they try to get the right amount of sleep and the right mental focus, physical fitness, and alertness. That when you hear they step out into the arena and the crowd of people are calling their names, they are not going out to disappoint. They want to be at the top of their game. Those who are very successful musicians and singers, they practice a lot to maintain their skills and abilities. The current music industry is too competitive to be off the mark. <coughs> because if you are not really performing to your full potential, other singers and musicians will replace them on the charts and they will just vanish like nothing. Like they didn't even exist. What they put in is exactly what they're going to get out of what they're doing. They can't take it slight. And some jobs, from my experience, I work with some people and I've seen some people at work, even when I go shopping and things like this. And a lot of them seems to lack motivation. Some of them are very lazy. You could see from their facial expression and their body language that they don't really want to be there. And if I could see that and I'm just going into a shop to buy something, what do you think of the manager who is watching them day in, day out? They're watching them. And they could realize that they really do not have anything much inside of them to take the company or the business to the next level. So when they're looking for people to promote and to get, in, get them into managerial positions and such like, they're not looking in their direction because they realize they're not putting in nothing. Instead of building up the business, they're bringing it down. And you know something? When you hear people go into a shop and they get bad treatment, Sometimes the person down the road is even selling one or two pounds more expensive. And they will tell that person, um, hold what you have. And they will go out of their shop and never return. Not only so, they're going to tell every time Dick and Harry they know. Keep from that shop there. They don't understand customer service. One of the worst things is to turn up at a place to do business. And you are spending the money and they're going on as if you're begging them to get something done. No customer service. And so because a lot of staff are not putting in a lot in their workplaces, they're really not making any headway. What you put in is exactly what you're going to get out of it. In even some jobs, I realize that they may be a little bit mediocre in the sense that it's not stretching you in the sense that you have a lot more ability than what you're currently doing. But here is a word of encouragement. If you keep on doing whatever you're doing to the best of your ability, somebody will take note of you at some point and say, so what you're doing here, you're doing it with such an if such efficiency. I think you need to move up to another level. And if they can't find a position for you in that place, they will tell you in another position open up down the road. And they will encourage you to go for it because they see that inside of you. 
What you put in is exactly what you're going to get out. Yeah. In our marriages, in our relationship with other believers, our children and our relatives and our spouses, etc. Most time, what we put in is exactly what we get out. If we don't show love, kindness, gentleness, concern and care for others, it is very difficult most time for others to give it back to us. Selfish people, rough people, proud people, arrogant people, rude people often find it hard to have fruitful and continuous and good relationship with others. Because they don't put enough into building and maintaining good relationships. Let me tell you something. Some people, from how they behave and how they approach is, just looking at them, you don't even want to get too close to them because you, you feel as if you are playing with a hen that is hatching. And as soon as you should mash their corn or look at them twice, they would fly on you and tear you to shreds. When you see certain kind of people with certain type of facial expression, brothers and sisters, it's not easy to approach them even to ask a gentle question because it seems as if they're carrying the weight of the world on their backs. I've met some in my time. And when it's like that, you have to tread cautiously with them. Let me tell you something. When you give off good vibes, positive vibes, a smile, Always look cheerful, always look upbeat and happy and approachable. You'll be surprised to know that people who you don't even think is taking note, they are taking note. Yeah. And they want to be your friend because you look like somebody who is loving and caring and gentle and nice. Whatever we put into our relationship with others. That's what we're going to get out of it. As simple as my son is there now at the age of two. I have to discipline him and I have to love him. If I just give him discipline and rough talking and coarse talking, after a while he'll begin to even fret me. And he's just waiting to reach 18. Because once he reach 18, he's going to eyeball me. And said, that's enough now with that rough talking. I'm an adult now. Watch your step. Don't play around. We have to be very, very careful. What we put in is what we are going to get out. The seeds we sow is going to produce fruit at some point. And good seed will produce good fruit. Amen. So, what I often tell people who say, nobody loves me. Nobody is nice to me. I always say to them, try and be nice to people as much as you can. Sow the seed. Make the first step. And you will see how things turn around and everybody will start loving you. Because you are lovable too. Amen. We see here that if we practice to show love, to our spouses, to everyone in our homes, in the church, everyone on our jobs, in our neighborhoods, etc. Even if some of them choose to hate us, to misuse us, to misjudge us, to be nasty to us without a cause. Don't be fair and be discouraged by them. Romans 12 verse 17 tells us, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. When we obey God's word and we constantly sow good seeds, Conviction will come upon some of them. And many of them get saved. 
and transformed and repent of the things that they're doing because the um, that you're doing to them when they're doing you evil will heap coals of fire upon their head. Conviction will hit them. They would want to know what kind of person you are. You're natural. How is it I'm doing you so many things? And you're pretending as if you're stupid or something like that because the more do you bad, the more you're doing me good. At some point, they will have to say something is different about you. And one of those days, they may ask you what it is. And you could tell them, it's the Lord that has made a difference in my heart. My mouth used to be hot. That when you tell me A, I would tell you B. But since God changed me, I know how to conduct myself. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. We're talking about sowing good seed today. Amen. So that we can reap good fruit. Hallelujah. In every area of our lives, we can conclude that generally speaking, what we put in is exactly what we'll get out of it. And spiritually, it's just the same. Some believers will tell you that they find church boring. Prayer boring. The word boring. Praise and worship boring. Witnessing boring. Everything that will enhance them spiritually, they will tell you it's boring. It's a waste of time. It's outdated. It's old fashioned. It is difficult to do and it is difficult to maintain. However, God is enlightening us today through his word and is telling us today that nothing that is spiritual that will enhance us spiritually is boring. Is what we put into it will determine what we get out of it. What am I trying to say? My father used to tell us a lot of times in the church back home that you could be in a service and you could be getting such a blessing. You could be getting such a touch from the anointing and the Holy Ghost. And he said that the next person sitting right next to you could be as dry as chips. No get nothing at all. Because you could be putting in so much. Getting lost in the realm of the spirit. And just worshipping and lifting up God. And getting a blessing. But somebody around you. Is just casual. Just neither here nor there. And so you want to know if. When you leave church. And are high and anointed. And feeling charged up. And you talk to somebody talk to you and they ask you, How was church today? Oh, superb! I had a wonderful well of a time. And the neighbor that was sitting next to you in the same service, you ask them, How was church? And they would say to you, say to you, I can't remember one thing that took place there. I was only there in body, but my mind was in another place somewhere. So we see whatever we put in into any aspect of life will determine what we get out of it. Yes. So nothing that is spiritual is boring. The word is not boring. Worship is not boring. Witnessing is not boring. Church is not boring. Prayer is not boring. It's just what you put into it will determine what it is. When I was in university, when I was in school, I found that a lot of times when you get a pile of work, sometimes you get stressed out thinking about the work because it seems as if it is so hard. How am I going to do this work for this deadline? It is so difficult. Well, let me tell you something. When you start buckling down yourself, Sit in the library for hours and hours and begin to research and begin to prepare yourself and begin to study for your exams and get into the hang of what you have to do. You don't find it boring again. You don't find it stressful again. You just begin to put in what is required. When you put in what is required, everything can be achieved. What you put in is exactly what you're going to get out of it. In the spiritual work, it is just the same. If we put in something, we will get something out of our spiritual walk. Amen. Amen. It is not boring. It is not a waste of time. 
It is not old fashioned. It's not outdated. If we realize the value of the things of God, we will put more into them and we will get more results. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the word of God tells us in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We shouldn't be living our lives just like the people of the world and like the people in our society. The secular man out there in the world don't want to hear nothing about church. They don't want to hear nothing about God. They don't want to hear nothing about his word. They don't want to hear nothing about praise and worship. They don't want to hear nothing to do with God. Because they're in darkness. But we are not in darkness today. We are children of the light. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. So we need not be ignorant as they are. Because when we understand the value of the things of God, we can put something into it and we will get something out. Nothing that is spiritual can be boring or waste of time once we are empowered with God's Holy Spirit. Once we are um, delighting ourselves in the things of God and we are applying God's word in every aspect of our lives. Whatever we don't understand, we can ask the Holy Spirit which is the greatest teacher. Teacher Holy Ghost, teach me. He can teach you any kind of subject. The Holy Spirit taught me academically. When I was a dunce like bat for many years. The same Holy Ghost that I put on my case. And tell him to teach me because I'm tired of being a borderline student. Every time. The mothers and my, my mother and my father would go to school. Orville, excellent. Pearl, absolutely superb. But Eugene need to work harder. All throughout my school life, I got it. But when I asked the Holy Ghost to teach me, it transformed me from being a dunce like bat to be a scholar. Somebody give God praise in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He will shock you. He will transform you and he will make you the head and not the tail. Glory to God. I am a living witness of what the Holy Ghost can do. A lot of times it's not even that you're done or so anything like that, you know, but the application is not there. But the Holy Spirit will teach you everything you need to do so that you come out on top. I went on a course after I told Holy Ghost, the teacher Holy Ghost to teach me. And when, this course, when, the, when the course was over, I was shocking myself. The Lord got me averaging over 90%. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah! The Holy Ghost teaches well. You can't beat him with that. So if he could teach you natural things, practical things, how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife, how to perform well on your job, how to excel in every aspect of your life, how much more would he teach you the things of God? So if prayer is a struggle, if reading the word is a struggle, if being consistent in God's house is a struggle, whatever it is, is a struggle to you and you want to see change, you can give the teacher, Holy Ghost, an assignment to teach you. And if he teaches you, you must come out on top. I'm a living witness. Somebody give God praise in the house. It works. It really does work. Let me tell you all something. There was a time that I could only sing in toilet and sing in bathroom because the voice was so quirky and so out of order. But I asked Holy Ghost teacher to teach me. Hallelujah. And when he taught me, I shocked myself because he was the one who was using my voice. And so he made all the difference in the world when the Holy Ghost began to teach me. When I saw Pastor Kingsley Mead preaching in Dyers, in Quartley and all sorts of different <coughs> places, I said, my God, watch an anointing. Watch a Holy Ghost filled preacher. I said, God, I'm not even asking you for the full portion, but give me even half of that. 
and the Holy Ghost heard my request and he gave it to me. Somebody ought to give God praise in the house because the Holy Ghost has no limitations. When we put in something, we're going to get something out. Come on. We just have to give him assignment to do. He's not just there to give us good pimples and make us speak in another language. He adjusts our life practically, spiritually, and in every way. Somebody give the Holy Ghost teacher a praise today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I'm not going anywhere without the Holy Spirit. Because I can't do anything at all in my own ability. It's him that is doing the work through me. Amen. And so we find that the psalmist David tells us for those who think that the word of God and the presence of God is a boring place to be in God's house. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He said, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. He also said, I rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And he also said, in Psalm 16 verse 11, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, they are pleasures forevermore. Amen. So there is no more place, there's no other place as exciting as being in God's presence. And he tells us in Psalms 37 verse 4 that we should delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see here that there is no boredom in the kingdom where the psalmist is concerned because everything he was saying he was a man that was enjoying his salvation that's why he said make a joyful night unto the lord holy land and serve the lord with gladness You're supposed to be serving god and droop it down and somebody's sorry for you every time they see you what wrong with you this morning Brother, I hear taking my licks. I'm not taking no licks. The job of the Lord is my strength. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Praise the the Lord. It's time for us to enjoy the Lord. Amen. What we put in is what we're going to get out of it. Let me tell you something. The word of God is not boring at all. Some people say, the word put me to sleep. I am on fire when it's praise and worship time. But the word is driving me to sleep every Sunday. The word is not boring. It's a big lie from the pit of hell. The psalmist David said in, 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 in Psalms 19 verse 10. More to be desired are dead than gold. Yet than much fine gold they are sweeter. Also than the honey and the honeycomb. Amen. This verse makes, us, makes it clear that the word of God is not useless or outdated. It has more value than gold. Even much fine gold. And it is not only very precious and valuable. But the word of God has taste. And a wonderful taste. Sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Hallelujah. Any believer that has no passion for God's word needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he will help every one of us to have passion and more understanding for his word. Once we ask him to help us, he will help us. When we practice to delight ourselves in God's word, he will prosper us beyond our imaginations. Psalms 1 verse 1 to 3 tells us, Blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law that he meditate day and night. Amen. Delight yourself in the word and meditate on it day and night. When you do that, he said, he shall be like 
a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. prosper. That is how we prosper as a believer. By delighting ourselves in God, God's word. Every day get it into your system. Enjoy it. Learn to make it a vital part of your life. Job said, I rather the word of God even more than my necessary food. That's how much it meant to him. This is how we prosper as believers. If we enjoy ourselves in the word of the Lord. Amen. Meditate on it. Digest it. Read it. Memorize it. And apply it and you will see results. Amen. What you put into the word. That's why you're going to get out the word. The mind is the battlefield for most human beings. And our thinking is very critical. You see what it is now. Is that our minds are soaking up a lot of things today. Listen, before you wake up every morning, especially if you're part of a WhatsApp group, you'll be surprised to know how many messages you could wake up and meet there if you even turn on your phone at 6 o'clock. Some people sending out messages all 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. Messages are coming in all the time. Some of them don't even have no tests. Some of them is not even enhancing you in any way. Facebook. Sometimes I have to switch off notification from Facebook. Because they're hitting me every minute. Bam, 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 bam. You want to know if a phone could ping so quick. And so often. And sometimes you waste time to go even look and they're not saying nothing to talk about. So we see here that the mind can take in and absorb a lot of foolishness in the current world that we live in. The mind, the devil is after the mind. And what we put inside of the mind is exactly what we're going to get out. When you see people drift and do all sorts of foolish and wrong things, whether it's violence, whether it's pedophilia, whether it's rape, whether whatever it is, a lot of it has to do with the junk that they're putting into their system. So when you put in the wrong stuff, you get out the wrong stuff. And so we have to think like how the Lord would want us to think. But how are we going to get it done? We got to put in godly stuff in our minds. And guard against the things that are meant to defile and destroy our lives. Why am I saying this? The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart... So you see, whatever you think about, that's how you're going to be. Only a matter of time before you play out what you're thinking about. And Philippians 2 verse 5 tells us, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 verse 8 tells us, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. God requires that we think differently from the people of the world because what we put in into our minds is exactly what we will get out of it. And it will bring forth fruit eventually. For to be carnally minded is death. That's what Romans 8 verse 6 tells us. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. To experience life and peace in our heart, in our body, in our spirit, we must be spiritually minded. And that's why Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 tells us, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your... Reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. The word of God when you absorb it into your system. 
into your mind, it will renew the mind. Because the mind just has a tendency of thinking what is wrong and what is not of God. That's just the world we're in today. So the mind can't just be allowed to just drift and do its own thing. We have to renew it every day through the word of God. Let me tell you something. Very important. When you wake up in the morning. Very important. You don't really need to grab your phone first thing up. You don't need to generally grab your iPad for the first thing up. If you have one of these, pick it up first. It's going to make a big difference to your life. If it's even five minutes, give God even that fresh mind in the morning. So that he could put in something that is good and that is tangible. You may say, Pastor, I love to watch the little news first. When I just get up in the morning. Be careful. Because as good as it is, you can begin to hear that people killing people. People stabbing people. People doing all sorts of wicked things. And your morning start off rumfled. Your morning start off feeling a bit uneasy because... Your mind just, you just wake up and your mind getting in so much of filth already. But if you renew the mind first thing up in the day, if it's even for five minutes, I'm giving you all a recipe for success. It's going to make a difference in your whole day. Even if you meet some sort of trouble or hassle along the way, during the day you could remember, I remember reading this morning. Let the peace of God rule in my heart. Amen. And thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. When you get the word of God into your system early, you cannot go wrong because the mind needs to be renewed as often as it can be renewed. We would never get anything out, profitable out of our mind, except we get put something good inside of it. Amen. Everything that will enhance our life spiritually is not boring. None of it is boring. Instead of us finding the things of God challenging and boring and unattractive, all we need to do is to ask the Lord, Lord, to renew our minds. Make my mind be different to the people of the world. That I'm not conformed to the things of the world, but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. The things that they see as being boring, I find it sweet. The things that they, think, that they think is a waste of time, I find it valuable. The things that they think is out of date and out of fashion, and they will tell you don't need to live so holy again. Because that was for Daniel and them time. That was for Joseph and them time. Don't you hear what's going on on the news? That even certain bishops and things doing certain things. I came to tell somebody today. You stand your ground like a Daniel. Stand your ground like a Joseph. Because holiness is still in style. And holiness is still required. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Come on. Be not conformed to the world. But be transformed by the renewing. Of the mind. Somebody give God praise today for a renewed mind. Thank you for a renewed mind, Lord. Thank you for a renewed mind. Because if I think like all the people of the world think, I don't know what would have become of me by now. But the renewed mind is bringing me into victory. I'm able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for my life. Amen. The word of God tells us that in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season you shall reap if we faint not. Some of us started off so well, but along the way we begin to conform, we begin to lose our focus. And so the world wants us to be more like the world 
and the world is not getting more like God. They're getting more like how the devil wants them to be. And the few who want to stand their ground with God and for to serve God in righteousness, they want us to begin to compromise and to become like them. But there's got to be some remnant somewhere who would say, for God I live and for God I die. Yeah. Whether they hate me or they don't hate me, I'm still going to do what God's word said. Amen. Amen. We got to stand our ground in this season because the time is short. And whatsoever we sow, that is exactly what we're going to reap. You plant the one little seed of corn in the ground. That one seed of corn is not going to just produce another seed of corn. It's going to produce many, many seeds of corn. So whatsoever we sow, that is what we're going to reap. But sometimes the reaping process gets me a bit frightened. Because sometimes you sow a bad seed. And when you expect to get back exactly what you sowed, sometimes you, ex you, ex you get back plenty more than what you were bargaining for. And that's why it's very important to sow good seed so that you can receive good fruit. Somebody give God praise in the house. Good seed. Amen. It brings forth good fruit. Let me tell you all something. The word of God tells us today that even though man is unjust, man is unfair, man can short pay us. You know sometimes you put in so much where man is concerned, whether it's on the job or anywhere like this, on the sports field and you put in such a good effort and you know sometimes they don't recognize you. Sometimes it's biasness. Sometimes it's all oh, they just don't like your attitude. Maybe you don't swear like the other boys. Maybe you don't, you don't operate like them. You don't drink with them. You don't go to pub with them and all other things like that. And they look at you differently. Yeah. And sometimes they just don't give you what you really deserve for what you're putting in. But thank God, the God that we are serving, yeah. when you put in for God, hallelujah, you're going to reap exactly what you put in. Come on somebody. Amen. You can't lose with him. Glory to God. The word of God tells us. Therefore brethren. Be steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God is going to pay us. And he's going to pay us good. Amen. You're going to get exactly what you deserve. No biasness is in him. No short pay is in him. Oh, somebody was giving a testimony recently of saying that they were working for somebody and they used to work so hard. But when payday came, the boss used to disappear. Didn't want to pay. There are some people like that. But thank God for Jesus. Jesus said, I'm coming quickly. Revelation 22 verse 12. And my reward, my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. You're not going to lose with God. You're not going to lose when you put in something for God. You're going to get back what you're looking for. And you're going to get back even more. Come on somebody and give God praise. Amen. We're not working in vain. Can't lose with God. And that's why. In all that I put in in this world. Whether for education. For work, for anything. I give to Caesar what is Caesar. But when it comes to God, I put in even more. And I give to God what is God's. Because sometimes man don't recognize you. But on that day, the Lord will recognize his faithful people. Amen. And he's going to reward us according as our work shall be. Jesus never told a lie and he never will tell one on the judgment day. All of us would love to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But if we are not good, if we are not faithful servants, we will definitely not hear those words because he can't tell what is not true. But let us practice to be faithful in our reading of the word, in our praying, in our worshiping, in our witnessing, in our giving, in our coming to his house. Whatever we are doing, Jesus is taking note of our faithfulness. 
and our reward is sure. And he will reward us in this life. And better and more reward is there waiting for us in the life to come. Come on somebody. Amen. Amen. Jesus came to this world and he led by example. And we should follow him as his followers. He was serious about his father's business even from a young age. And he said in John chapter 9 verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. He was totally committed, focused, and dedicated to fulfilling his early mission throughout his life. And because of this, before he gave up the ghost, he was able to cry out, It is finished. finished. Man's redemption fully paid for. And through his shed blood today, and the sacrifice of Jesus' life, no human being need to die and go to hell again. Because John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Salvation is free for all. Because Jesus paid it all. Somebody ought to give Jesus a praise today for paying it all on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus. We don't deserve it, but you have done it for us. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. God the Father was very pleased with his finished work on earth. And Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 tells us, Wherefore God had highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus... Every knee should bow of things in, earth, in heaven and things in earth. And things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. What Jesus put in while he was on earth, it did not go in vain. He got something out of it. Amen. Thank God for the, the wonderful work of Calvary. And it was not in vain. Those of us who are saved today, we are recipients of his free gift of salvation. And we are to be ever more grateful for the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who take it away. The sins of the world. Paul was a great persecutor of the church. And because of this, after God saved him and transformed him, from Saul to Paul. He went flat out. Just with the same vigor and the same zest and the same enthusiasm that he had for persecuting the church. He was transformed into a brand new man. And now the gospel that he was destroying people for preaching. He himself was preaching it and spreading it like wildfire. He took the gospel to the Gentiles world, Gentile world, and preached everywhere he could because he was full of fire. And because of his commitment, his steadfastness, and his faithfulness in his ministry, God used him mightily. He wrote two thirds of the New Testament that we read and enjoy today. Numerous miracles, signs, and wonders were done through Paul. And he was a pioneer of the gospel because he was faithful. He put in something. They stoned him. They put him in prison. He was shipwrecked. Snake bite him. Everything you could think about happened to Paul. But he was steadfast. And he was unmovable. And he kept on going on all the way. And before he, full, he finished his early ministry. He wrote in 2 Timothy verse 4, chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought a good fight. Come on, somebody. I have finished my course. Hallelujah. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Amen. 
Let us put for put our best foot forward for God. Because if we put in something into our salvation, we're going to get something out of it. The time for just going around in circles is long gone. The time for just um, going through the motion is long gone. The time for lukewarm Christianity is long gone. If we don't put in anything into our salvation, we will find it dead. We will find it boring. We will find it just unfulfilling. But when you hear we start putting something into it, everything that is spiritual will become our greatest delight. And God will bless us and God will prosper. Somebody ought to give God praise in the house today for word in season. Hallelujah! Strategies for success. Strategies for victory. If you're not saved today, today is a good day to be saved. The signs of the times are everywhere. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Don't let the opportunity to serve Jesus pass you by. Because it's not all a life to live. But after death, there is a judgment. God don't want anybody to experience hellfire. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You may be saved today, but you have slackened off a bit. And it's good to give ourselves a spiritual check. Somebody said one time, I need a spiritual medical checkup. Just like how we go for a checkup from the doctor to see what is wrong, what is not functioning right. We need to put our own self under the examination table sometime and see where am I in God? Lord, I want you to show me where I am st I'm not where I ought to be. Search me, O oh God, and see if there's any wicked way in me. I want to be rapture ready. I want to be how I ought to be in this season. So that when I, whether you come or whether you call, I shall be ready to go home with you. Amen. Can't afford to slack no riding any longer. Time is too short for that. It's time to serve God with a greater commitment, greater zeal, greater focus than what we ever had before. You may be doing well, but you, said, you want to say to the Lord, give me more strength. Give me more anointing. Give me more power. Give me more of what it takes so that I will be ready to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Today is a good day for every one of us to make our calling and our election sure. We don't know how much time we have left, but every opportunity we get to draw closer to God, we should make the best of it. Because salvation is not something to play with. Let me tell you something. It is possible that many who came to church regularly on the judgment day, the Lord will still say to them, I don't know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. The, the foolish virgins experience this, the five foolish virgins. We don't want that to be our portion. We don't want that to be our situation. We are in this thing too long to slip up in this ninth hour. And so we want the Lord to draw us closer to him. We want him to give us that hunger and that thirst after righteousness. We want him to give us that desire to go after the thing that is of him. And let the things of this world go strangely dim in the light of his glory. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. The Lord Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins 
and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.